Hi everyone, welcome back. Tonight we're gonna make um, lemoncello uh, ricotta cheesecake, one of my famous cheesecakes, and a ricotta amaretto cheesecake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one batter and then I'm gonna um, flavor them differently. I'll split them so I can make two different cheesecake at once. To start, you're gonna need two spring pans. I already pre put the crust in here, put them in the oven, and put a little foil around it so that I could save some time for the video and we don't wind up taking too much time. The other thing you're gonna need, I use a KitchenAid stand mixer. That's one of my favorite staples. You're gonna need two teaspoons of vanilla, a shot of limoncello, and you'll need a shot of amaretto. I do use the, this amaretto here, in case you're interested. And limoncello I bought, I believe, possibly at Costco. You'll need sugar, two pounds of um, ricotta, right here, which I made homemade. I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the pot, and get it out of the way here. Okay, so the ricotta that I make is dry on the drier side and squeeze it real well just to make these cheesecakes. Then I have eight ounces of mascarpone cheese, which is this one right here. And then I have a piece, eight ounce piece of the Philadelphia cream cheese that's gonna go in as well. And what I'll do is I'll let this spin and start creaming before I add the other um, ingredients. So let's go ahead and place this on. I'm gonna use the paddle. Okay. Gonna let that get a little creamy. Make sure you leave your eggs at room temperature as well as your cheese, a lot of your products. It just makes it easier. It works best for when you're baking. From time to time you want to stop it and move the cheeses down back in here. Scrape the bowl a little bit because it does stick to the sides of the bowl. Okay, back to just gonna let that spin. You're also gonna need um, two, four, six eggs with the white, so yolk and white, and you'll need just two yolks. And this one I have to thank my kumari, Melissa, because she has chickens and I get fresh eggs from her. So this one's for her. You want uh, lemon zest, quarter cup of heavy cream, and your sugar. And I did say your vanilla here. And we'll, um, I'll list all the ingredients. If you look up my limoncello one too, you'll find the ingredients on that one as well. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and do it again. Just take what's on the paddle off and I'm gonna start incorporating the eggs. If you don't have one of these kitchen aids or something similar, I suggest you get one if you do a lot of baking because it really does cut back on a lot of time. Especially if you're doing other things, this will help you while you get another stuff ready. Okay, another important thing is you want to put one egg in at a time, wait till it gets fully incorporated, and then put in your next one and so forth. You don't want to put everything at once, okay? So here we go. One egg at a time. The 
put the next one in. I'm going to bring it up a notch. Now this is a new mixer for me and I'm trying to wonder why it's a little loud. My other one wasn't loud like this. So I might have to get this check out maybe and return it and get another one. But I stand by the KitchenAid. It's one of my favorites. But one thing really cool about the fresh eggs is that the yellow, the yolk, is very, very bright. So when you make this cheesecake, it looks bright yellow. I'm gonna stop it down here because I need to scrape the sides again. I just wanna make sure everything gets really incorporated. So that's something you definitely wanna do. And I'll show you here the consistency in a little bit. But you can see how creamy, fluffy it is, and yellow. I'll try to bring the camera in a little bit closer too. Because the next full egg, and like I said, I always take my stuff as I use them, empty the dishes, what I have measured out, right into the sink. Then when everything is in the oven, then I'm cleaning up the kitchen. So that was the last of the whole eggs. Now we still have the two, just the yolks. And those are gonna go in one at a time. Spoon here. Okay. You'll also need a big deep pan because you're going to sit the, the ricotta um, mixture that's in the spring form pan. Boy, try to say that quick twice. Um, into a bagna maria, a bay marie, which is water halfway up the sides of the pan. That's why you see that my pans here are covered in aluminum foil. So we want to make sure you cover them real good with aluminum foil so that just in case there's no opportunity for any water to go in. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and lower this and really give it a nice scrape down. Looks really nice. I'm gonna let you see this close how um, light and fluffy this is because you're using the ricotta cheese, you're using the mascarpone, and just eight ounces of the um, of the Philadelphia cream cheese. Bring you in a little bit closer so you can see exactly. One day I'll have professional equipment. This will be a lot better. So take a look here how light and fluffy. And that's just the, the ricotta, the mascarpone, the Philadelphia, and the eggs. But look how it's almost like a ribbon. Okay, that's the consistency you want to get. And what I'll do now is I will add in the lemon zest. Because that will go into both types of uh, cheesecakes. My favorite, I'll be honest, I do make a very good New York style cream cheese uh, cheesecake. But the only thing for me is, when you make that kind of a cake, you can only really eat one piece. Get, or your guests will eat half a piece and leave the other half in the dish. So either you slice small, small pieces or, I don't know, maybe some people do eat a whole thing. I, I wouldn't be able to eat a whole, a whole slice of the, um, American cheesecake. I tend to like the ricotta cheesecake. It's one of my favorites. It's more on the light side. It's very fluffy. Um, it's got a different texture, different flavor. It's just more appealing to me. You could eat, if you wanted to eat two slices of this, you could. 
let's say you were in the mood to have sweets. So, I'm just scraping what's on my spoon here. I'm gonna scrape up here because I forgot to do that. Okay. I'm also gonna add in the vanilla. I'm gonna let this whip and I'm gonna slowly put in the sugar. You don't have to move fast with this. If you have everything um, measured out and in different bowls, it'll be that much easier for you. Don't try to like grab something, place it in it. Always have, I always stress this to people, have your ingredients out and measure it. So you, you can never mess up. We do have to add a pinch of salt in here and I will get that. So I'm gonna use the size of a, an espresso spoon. Half of it, that's about it. All right, in goes the heavy cream. Oops, out comes the heavy cream. This cheesecake is gonna bake, they're gonna bake for hour and a half to two hours in the oven at 325. It's a slow bake. This is not a rush bake. It slowly cooks, um, it will rise. Do not, please do not open up your oven at all during this time. When you pass an hour and a half, hour and 20 minutes, open up your light, take a look at it. If it looks like it's firm, then by all means, I would open the oven slowly, look at it. If it looks like it's totally cooked for you, now it's, every cheesecake is gonna be a little jiggly, just a little bit, because it's gonna set. Once that cake, like I said, after an hour and a half, you see that it's, it's fine. What you're gonna do is, you're gonna shut off the oven, you're gonna pry it open with, I don't know, back of a wooden spoon, and leave the cakes in there for another half hour, half hour, 45 minutes. After that, you're gonna take them out and you're gonna let them cool room temperature and then they go into the refrigerator, they're ready maybe about eight hours later. So you won't see my finished, um, well, you'll see it finished, but to you, time will lapse because I'll pause the video. But for me, it'll be the next day. So you probably see me look a little different. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give it one more little swirl and then we're gonna divide these and we're gonna put in the rest of the ingredients so that we get two cheesecakes out of this, two different flavors. Looking at my mixture, it's nice and smooth. I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit more. I like it nice and whipped, it just to me it's like fluffier, the better. And then we're gonna go ahead and put these in the um, in the uh, spring corn pans. All right, I think that's good. Let me get these. Hands closer to us. Oopsie. I was trying not to get that all the way in. It gets a little messy. Let's clean it up. What you don't want is chunks of cheese um, that's not smooth. You want to make sure that this is nice and smooth. Um, you will see like the, the zest of the lemon. 
especially if it's a really good lemon and it gets nice um, zest off the skin. Sometimes the skins are very thin, but this was a really good lemon, so I, I could actually see the lemon zest throughout here really nicely, and it's, it's sort of on the long side. Um, usually my lemoncello cheesecake calls for lemon and orange zest because I love citrus, and you'll always hear me say that. I'm a citrus kind of girl. But um, because we're making two different ones, I didn't want to add the orange and the lemon, so I just chose one. I could have probably just used the orange instead. But I chose the lemon, and that's it. Okay, in this goes. Just scraping down the bowl here a little bit. And we're ready to place these into the pan. Just rinse off my hands. And let's start placing these in. Okay, so I'm gonna put half the batter in a bowl first, because you have remember you have to mix those shots in. So half is going in here. Looks about right. Just taking a quick glance at it to see if I eyeballed this right. I think I did. Okay. So, Salud de Limoncello is going to go in here. El amaretto is going in this one. And we're going to give it a nice stir. If you want to stir it really good, make sure it's all incorporated. Okay, quickly mix it. This is really going to bring up the flavor. And then this cake, the almond one, the amaretto one, I'll probably decorate with some almonds, fresh whipped cream or icing. I don't know, it depends on which one. Okay. So this is the amaretto. I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into the pan. And I believe these are, I wanna say 10 inch spring form pans. I always get that question. I had um, one lady tell me that she had batter left over and it might have been because I used the biggest spring form pan the first time around, so. But she says she didn't care. She says next time she'll make two. <laughs> I don't think she was prepared to make two, that's what happened. Okay, so. Just scraping this off here. Okay. You could just give this a quick tap too, if you want to. But once it's in the bagno maria, it's gonna spread evenly, it'll look good. I'm gonna give a rinse to the spatula so I can mix the limoncello one. All right guys, let's mix up the limoncello. Um, the last time I did my limoncello, I did it with my homemade biscotti. This time I used homemade biscotti, but it's not the same ones. And then I ran out a little bit, so I had another favorite cookie that I had. And I just went ahead and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Went ahead and broke them up into pieces, into real fine pieces, using a mallet to get it to a crumb consistency with your butter, and that's which how you make your crust. Um, this um, lemon cello one too is really pretty if you decorate with some fresh blueberries goes along really well with it. So let's go ahead and put this one in. And let's see how I, good I do with my eyesight if I measure it basically the same. Almost, I think. Yeah, 
almost. I did spray these pans with um, a little bit of the spray, like uh, oil for the pans, baking pans. All right, guys. All right, like I said, now these are gonna go into this pan. I'm gonna fill up with very hot water. I happen to have extremely hot tap water, which is awesome. Because my husband doesn't like to lower the temperature. Never did, so he did the same in my house, so. All right, that's one. I'm sort of grateful these two fit in here together. I'm gonna fill these up with, like I said, with the hot water. They're gonna go into the oven to 325. They fit perfect. And I will be back later on with the finished product and maybe we'll do some um, some whipped cream and decorate the top of the cheesecake, add some fresh fruits. And on the amaretto, I would do some sliced almonds around the side or top. Maybe some maraschino cherries to decorate it with. It'll look really nice and presentable. Well, thank you again for joining me. Have a great night. Hi guys, I'm back. I'm gonna show you the finished product. I didn't wind up um, turning the video on to show you how I decorate and how I made the frosting. It's basically mascarpone cheese, eight ounces, um, eight ounces of half and uh, heavy cream, and then about a cup of um, the powdered sugar, whipped really well in the mix machine. And this is the final results here. I will show you. This is the amaretto decorated with almonds, and this one here is the limoncello. And the limoncello, I went ahead and put uh, blueberries. I um, put them over the stove in a simple syrup with a piece of large piece of lemon zest. Let it cook down, and then I strained it and placed it on top. And I also put a um, about I don't know four tablespoons of limoncello in it, and in the almond one, the whipped mascarpone, uh, mascarpone cheese has almond flavor in that frosting. Okay, well, till next time.